Hello everybody. Today we're going to discuss about condenser microphones. In the previous video we discussed about dynamic microphones. So what is a microphone? A microphone is a transducer that converts sound into electrical signals. Well condenser microphones are also transducers that do the same thing. But condenser microphones work on the electrostatic principle by altering the capacitance between two charged plates. Let's take a detailed look at the construction and the working principle of a condenser microphone. Alright, here is the construction of a condenser microphone. The condenser microphone is given the name uh, because it does have a condenser inside it, and a condenser is nothing but a capacitor. The name condenser is obsolete, but it's still used in context with the microphone. So what is a capacitor? A capacitor is an electronic component that is used to store charge in the form of an electrostatic field. So the capacitor usually has two plates. In this case, you know, there is a golden plate and there is a black plate. So the golden plate is a free moving plate and is the diaphragm of the microphone and the back black plate is a fixed plate, also called as a back plate. Now, in, in order for this microphone to work, you know, it doesn't work uh, without any power unlike the dynamic microphone. It does need a power source. So they require an electrical current to charge the plates. And this can be accomplished by two ways, either by using a battery or by using a phantom power. Now, a phantom power is nothing but a power source to power this mic directly using the microphone cables. All right, now let's discuss the working principle. So when sound waves arrive, you know, they're, they're oscillating motions, they vibrate back and forth due to compressions and rarefactions, and they hit the diaphragm, and the diaphragm also starts moving back and forth. Now remember, diaphragm is a free moving object here, but the back plate is fixed. So when the diaphragm moves back and forth, you know, it's just gonna push the regions between the back plate and the diaphragm. And this, you know, this results in a change in a quantity, and that quantity is the capacitance of a capacitor. So the change or the variation in this capacitance due to the relative motion of the diaphragm with respect to the back plate gives rise to an electrical charge. And that is drawn out and taken out to the output. Here's a frequency response graph of a condenser microphone. And as we can observe here, the graph is flat over the entire human hearing range from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So this is possible because the diaphragm of a condenser microphone is very light compared to that of a dynamic microphone. So the condenser microphone diaphragm is very efficient at moving and is capable of capturing a wide range of frequencies, meaning all the sound frequencies can easily push the diaphragm of a condenser microphone because it being very light. Whereas the diaphragm of a dynamic microphone is very hard, so especially high frequency sounds have a hard time pushing the diaphragm of a dynamic microphone, hence cannot be captured. So and it, uh, the frequency response of a condenser microphone need not be flat. You know, it is flat for a reason because uh, in addition to the diaphragm being light, there are good quality materials used in order to capture even the tiniest amount of sound. So if a, mic, if a microphone doesn't use good quality parts, it can end up having a bad frequency response. This is a polar pattern of a condenser microphone, and condenser microphones have something that is called as an omnidirectional polar pattern, meaning they can capture sounds from all directions evenly. And this is very useful when it is required to capture intricate sounds coming from different directions so as to reproduce the event as is. All right, let's look at some advantages and disadvantages of condenser microphones. Well, to begin with, they have a very low mass diaphragm, which is efficient at moving back and forth, thereby literally capturing all sound waves without any restrictions. So the frequency response is literally flat because the diaphragm is accepting every single sound wave. Hence, they have a very flat frequency response. And no doubt they have a superior sound quality. The sound produced by a condenser microphone is described as being crisp, clear, and detailed. So they also offer a good transient response. Now transient response is really important when your intention is to capture sounds of very short duration. For example, a finger snap, or a pluck of a guitar, or the attack of a drum. 
They also offer very low background noise compared to dynamic microphones. Now, background noise can really spoil the recording. You know, they can meddle with your fine-tuned recordings. They are very small and they are very light in weight. They also have their own disadvantages. The first and the foremost disadvantage being the cost is very expensive as compared to dynamic microphones, predominantly because of its quality. And they are very fragile, so in case you accidentally drop them, you, have, you drop them from real good. Like, they're not going to work if you drop them. And they have a complex design, and, you know, they are also very sensitive to humidity and temperature. Hence, they are used in, you know, very controlled environments like recording studios. And they have a limitation on the sound pressure levels, so, you know, they shouldn't be used for high level, high volume recording as it can damage the diaphragm. Here is an example of a condenser microphone available in the market. It's Shure SM27SC model. This is how it looks like. Here's a Rode NTK model. This is how it looks like. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, hit the comments below and I'll be sure to respond. Alright, thank you for watching and have a great day.